story of the day is the final day of the Democratic National Convention. Tonight's events ending with a historic moment for Vice President Kamala Harris. 12 News' this Deanna Gutierrez leads off our team coverage inside the United Center in Chicago. Deanna, all eyes on Chicago tonight. And Kristen, it's the marquee night for the DNC here at the United Center in Chicago. Vice President and Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris already said a few words at the beginning of this convention thanking President Joe Biden for his leadership. But tonight, history will be made as she explains why she wants to be the next president of the United States. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stage. Everyone is starting to trickle in at this hour, getting ready for the start of the final night, the fourth and final night here starting in less than uh, an hour at about 5.30. Tonight's theme for our future. And let's take a look at some of tonight's headliners. On your screen, you see there Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and Vice President Kamala Harris will be wrapping up the night with her acceptance speech. Our live team coverage continues with political director Matt Smith, who's joining us live now. And Matt, you spoke to New Jersey Senator Cory Booker last night. This conversation happened on the floor after Governor Tim Walz's speech. Deanna, yes, and we have made it. Night four, the Democratic National Convention, just under an hour, will officially kick off with the program. As you see behind me, the delegates beginning to stream in this evening, the guests. This arena, just like in Pfizer Forum for Republicans, will be full once again on this final night. The capstone to hear Vice President Kamala Harris, where she's expected to do a number of things. Reintroduce herself to the country, introduce herself to those who don't know her well, and paint a contrast between her and former President Donald Trump. We also talked with ABC News political director Rick Klein about the implications. Take a listen. What does she need to do tonight? Is this a big moment for her? I think this is a huge moment because she has been running on this uh, this idea of her rather than the reality of her. Uh, the, the image of her has turned around quite a bit, but now it's time to, to put her own words behind it. Uh, she doesn't get to rely on Barack Obama or Michelle Obama or the Clintons or Oprah or Joe Biden for that matter. She's her own person now. Um, she and Governor Walls are going to be out there campaigning, speaking on their own. And her story, the way that she tells that story, uh, both at the, at the final night of the convention and then well beyond, I think that's what what really defines whether she's successful or not. Democratic Senator Cory Booker, a close friend as well for Vice President Harris. We're going to hear more from him at five. As you mentioned, Deanna, Senator Baldwin also on the stage this evening before Vice President taking the stage in primetime. Deanna. Political director Matt Smith live on the convention floor. Matt, thank you. Back up here in our remote studio at the United Center. People behind me, like I mentioned, they're trickling in, getting ready for the start of tonight's program. And we know how important Wisconsin is, not only at this convention, but in the presidential election come November. Joining me live is Thelma Seiss, a Milwaukee delegate and businesswoman. Thelma, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start our conversation on economy. You've worked in the public utility. You know how people respond to inflation, to price hikes. What does Kamala Harris need to say tonight about the economy moving forward? Well, I think uh, Vice President Harris has already said a great deal about her thinking of the kinds of things to do to impact housing, uh, food costs, drug costs, those things that in indeed impact every person's household. So most importantly, what she needs to talk about in addition to that tonight is her compassion, her understanding and her respect and her inclusion of the needs of what people uh, are asking for, talking about, and saying each day. Now, last night, Oprah took the stage. It was a bit of a surprise visit here for us, but she invited all undecided voters to come on the Democratic side. And we know that Wisconsin is one of those places where it is split. We've seen those polls and how close everything is. That's why, you know, we, we're talking about both parties and having those undecided voters and how important they are. But right. for Wisconsin, what is people in our community saying for their neighborhoods? What do they need to see changed? Well, everyone's just saying and talking about safety, the ability to care for families, the ability to educate their children, the ability for those that are senior citizens to have reliable social security and ability to afford med uh, their medicine. So what they're saying day in and day out, I want my needs, my issues to be thought about. I want to be respected in the decision making and I want to know that I matter to you and I am confident that our nominee is going to make sure people understand they indeed matter. Bigger picture here, Thelma. 
is the country ready for a woman to be the president of the United States and why? I think I'm going to reverse your question. It's not are they ready for it. The reality is it's going to happen. And it's going to happen because day in and day out, women show proof of their extraordinary leadership, their talent. They manage families. They manage community. They manage major jobs. So we are the ones. We can do this. We can line up with and we can perform extraordinarily. And tonight, we're going to hear from the woman that will become the first African-American elected female of this country. Do you think it'll be as emotional, if not more, from last night to tonight? I'm sure it will be, because even for me, standing there tonight, thinking about how my mother worked in the fields and gave birth to children, went back to the field, I'll be thinking about my mama as I stand here tonight in this historic moment. I'll be thinking about even the women that at the hotel where I stay, cleaning the bathroom day in and day out. I'll be thinking about those women. And I'll be thinking about the women in Milwaukee that are getting on the second bus to get to back home or to a job. So I'm going to be thinking about all of those that have done so much to give access to the opportunity for me to stand here. I appreciate your time, Thelma. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Thank you for the us. opportunity. Of course. It's going to be extraordinary tonight. Thank you so much, Milwaukee delegate here with us, giving us a, an idea of what everyone is talking about down there. But from here, from inside of the home of the Chicago Bulls, we'll continue keeping it uh, monitored. We'll let you know how it all goes throughout the rest of this evening. Derek Kristen. Very compelling and, and powerful interview there, Deanna. Great job with that. Thank you.